morning, Spraylock Nation, coming to you from Studio 97C. Why not? We were in 11 and 34 before, so we're going to go up a little bit. And again, coming to you from the great and wonderful city of Chattanooga, Tennessee, we want to talk about concrete as always. Today, we want to talk about curling of slabs. And I'm not talking about the upper lip curl that Elvis had. Hey, Mama, <laughs> look at that slab thing's huge. Or curly. Or yeah. curly jump. Yeah, 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 got that too. What we're talking about is the upward or downward bending of edges of the concrete. Usually, you don't see it while after you're finished, but you get your joints cut in, you do see it. And I know sometimes it's used interchangeably with warping. Not sure exactly if the, what the definition would be there, but I've generally heard it as curling being on horizontal surfaces, warping being on vertical surfaces. Yeah, maybe. Um, it's all caused by the same causes, though, and that's, that's going to be that uh, differential, the moisture temperature differential from one surface to the next. So if you have a variable shrinkage happening at the top surface of the concrete, then those edges are going to curl upwards. And that can be related to moisture or it can be related to temperature, temperature uh, causing some, some thermal movement that's different from, from each surface. Um, it can be a, a big problem uh, primarily on things like uh, large warehouse floor slabs where there's a forklift traffic or something like that because if you think about it, you got a joint and that slab, when it goes to curl, raises up. And if this slab over here isn't curling in the same way, then you have a, an edge that's going to be impacted by those well, even if it is curling the same way, you're getting a different loading hitting it. Mm -hmm. So as it's bumping across there, if if it curls bad enough and you don't have that support of the subgrade under it, you yeah. could get it to break right there. Sure enough. And well, yes, it is there, but if you get curling in a flooring application, oh yeah, that I mean, becomes yeah. unsightly, and it's not necessarily just a trip hazard, which you could have, but the flooring is not going to hold up like it's supposed to. It's not going to last as long. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. And, and really, drying shrinkage is going to be the root cause of most curling uh, instances. I have seen some temperature-related curling in my career, but those have been some, some really specialized, uh, you know, hot areas like oven rooms and things like that where you run into some of those, right. those temperature-related ones. But drying shrinkage, controlling drying shrinkage, is really one of the ways that you can help minimize the chances of curling happening. So how, how do, what are some good ways to can try to get a handle on that drying well, shrinkage? First, I'd go back and watch the video. We talked about drying shrinkage oh, yeah. and reducing drying shrinkage. Yeah, we But did. for those who, who might have not, who have already seen it, let's just, you know, pull back through. So, you know, we're looking at lower water cement ratio. Yeah. You know, we're looking at using the biggest aggregate you can because aggregates don't shrink, so we want to do that. There's also shrinkage reducing admixtures. Yep. A good jointing plan. Yes, absolutely. Using ACI recommendations for proper jointing for thickness of your slabs. Yes. And speaking of thickness of slabs, don't use the thinnest section you can. Yeah. Thinner so slabs and the longer joint spacing is going to be a wonderful way to possibly create your, your curling. Yeah, so thick slabs, uh, closer joint spacing than you might think you need, but you know, in the, within the ACI recommendations, but you want to keep those tight and square. You want, to, you want them as square as possible. You don't want you don't want one side being thirty feet long and the other and the other side being five feet long. You know, then you got a real real problem on your hands. Now, short of use just your design, you know, you want to kind of limit your your cementitious. So the yeah. paste content paste is what shrinks. Like we said with the large aggregate, aggregates don't. And then proper curing. Absolutely. Proper curing, proper, proper curing, curing proper, proper curing. Hey, did I mention proper curing? Yeah, I think okay. so. Just want to make sure. And also, don't forget properly designed reinforcement yes. and, and placed. Yes. You, there's going to be some places where you're going to get some restraint, which is going to give you drying shrinkage, and you want to make sure you have a, a your rebar in the right place. Sorry, yeah. no, I just messed that up. No, you, you know. did great, Josh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so one of the things, uh, you know, these videos that we're doing, sometimes we throw in uh, things about Spraylock's products, just, you know, Spraylock is uh, making these videos possible. But uh, one of the things that Spraylock's products can do is hold that moisture in the, the evaporable water. We can, we can help uh, hold that in, and that can influence the drying shrinkage, as we mentioned on that video. So uh, if you're trying to control drying shrinkage, Spraylock is a great way to help with that. So let us know how we can help on your next project. Thank you again for watching another video from us. We're, we're grateful that you invite us in through your computer screens or your phones each and every time you watch one of these videos. So if you don't mind, if you got a comment or you got a question, subscribe. Put it down in the comments below. We'll answer it to you. Or you can reach out to us through email or go to our Concrete Protection website, concreteprotection.com. Thank you. Until the next video, we'll see you then. Thank you so much.